Today, we're going to go over setting up a little home lab for penetration testing. And this video, we're just going to download a virtual machine, import that into VirtualBox, and then create a network that we can attack this box over, and then assign all virtual machines to that network. In this case, what you're going to do is download a virtual machine that somebody else has built that has intentional vulnerabilities. So you get to practice using tools that work against those vulnerabilities in a home lab environment. There's a website called Vulnhub, and all of these are different machines that people have made. You can target specific services like Apache or WordPress. Today I'm going to be doing the one called Nullbyte. It's old, it's popular, there's a lot of documentation about it. Before you download, you can click it, get a bunch of details. Down here, these are links to walkthroughs, so if you get stuck, you have resources. Make sure that it runs on whichever hosting service you're using. I'm using VirtualBox. This runs on VirtualBox. Uh, when you're ready to download, pick a mirror, download it. Once you've downloaded it, uh, extract it. Uh, the easiest way to install the .ovas I've found is just open with VirtualBox Manager. You'll have some default settings you can go over. I'm just going to hit Finish, and now we're importing it. Now, the tricky part with these is you don't really want them to be able to communicate directly with the internet. You don't really know what's on the machines, and you also don't want to have a vulnerable machine pointed at the internet that other people could get into and then be on your network. So what I recommend doing is you go to Tools, Network Manager, and if you don't already have a host-only network, then you're going to want to create one. And it's, I'm pretty sure it comes with one already in here. If not, you can just go to Create. You can configure these. Well, just change this address to whatever address range you want. Enable the DHCP server. That should be enough. I'm going to delete that because I already got two here. Now, the next thing that you need to do before you start them is to actually utilize this network. So we go into settings, go to network, and this may automatically be on NAT or bridged. You want to go to host only adapter, pick the adapter that exists or the one that you created. And when you connect to that, the DHCP server will automatically give you an IP address for this machine. That's for Kali. And so you need to configure both your machines to be on the same network. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to access it. So you just do the same thing for the other machine network host only, and pick the same network. The, the rest of these settings here, you can pretty much leave alone. Just make sure that cable's connected and enable network adapter is set up. And then here we're getting a warning, invalid settings detected. The virtual machine has less than nine megabytes of video memory. You could probably ignore that because we're not even going to be using the video, or you can just crank that up to nine here in the display. If you don't already have Kali installed, just go to Kali.org, Virtual Machines. I'm using VirtualBox, so I would go to VirtualBox and download it. You'll need to also, if you're on Windows, download uh, 7-zip so that you can extract that, I believe. And the only difference is it's not going to be an OVA, so you're going to need to go to Add. and after you've downloaded and extracted it, you can just add the .vbox. You don't necessarily have to use Kali. You could use Ubuntu, install tools that you need as you need them, or any other image. I'll just be using Kali for this. So last thing we're doing in this video is make sure that everything's working properly. I'm going to start up Kali first here. If you want to toggle full screen, in VirtualBox, you can hold a uh, right control plus F, and that'll give you full screen. Okay, Kali's running, and I can see from here we're connected to some kind of network. Type ifconfig, and this looks correct. If you remember from the host only adapter that we set up, our DHCP was starting at 100, so the server should be up. We can ping 
100 and the server's answering. Now we also probably check, see if we have internet. So we can ping Google uh, DNS and it's saying network is unreachable. So that's what we wanted. We want to be on a network that is not connected to the internet. So that's as far as I'll be going with this today. I want to keep these short and split up into sections that are relevant. In the next one, we'll start working against the null by image and see how far I can get without having to look at a cheat sheet, I guess. It's been a couple of years since I did any of this. Hope you enjoy. That's all I got.